In retrospect, it's kind of ironic that my love for the science I chose would be my predicament. I mean, it, it looks unfair that my curiosity and thirst for knowledge would lead me in such a shady path. Only thing I ever wanted was to be better at my job. I'm a medical student. For as long as I can remember myself, I was fascinated by the human body. No matter how bad we treat it sometimes, it is nothing sort of perfection. The structure and function of the organs, the delicate high functioning brain, blue snake like veins carrying the blood into the heart to be cleaned, recycled, simply magnificent. It was a simple choice for me. I wanted to study more about the body, learn all the details it hides, and sometimes rectify it. Now, don't get me wrong, I didn't really enjoy studying to get to medical school. Most of the time, it was a tedious process of learning about irrelevant topics that I really didn't care about, but I managed to pull through and get to the university. There, I developed very mixed feelings, although some lectures were diving into the secrets of what we were supposed to be learning about. Most were simply stuff read from a PDF presentation by a semi-bored professor. The kind of knowledge you could acquire by reading some science magazines. Magazines I had already read. So most of the times I went to the campus feeling indifferent, secretly hoping that I could get to learn something amazing, like perhaps a new fun fact in the anatomy class. And that was rare. I can't say I have many friends. Come to think of it, I don't think I have any. Friendly with all my classmates and peers, but we really don't have anything else in common other than we study the same subject. They didn't study the way I did. Most of them valued the prestige and paychecks that came with being a doctor. Some truly wanted to help others in times of sickness, but no one wanted to actually learn. Not the way I did. They consumed themselves in parties, drugs, and sex, while I went the extra mile and studied something more than the given material every night just to tame my lust for knowledge. I remember the day Jonathan approached me in the campus cafeteria. I was in a break between some classes that we both participated he sat opposite to me and asked me how I was doing. We chatted a bit about everything and nothing, and mostly regarded some projects that we were working on as homework at the time. Now, I like this guy, Jonathan. Jonathan wasn't the best student or the most intriguing person, but I knew he always truly loved medicine and tried his best to learn more than what the university spoon-fed us. I respected him for that. So it came as a pleasant surprise when he introduced me to a new idea. Hey, man, he said. I know that you feel bored here. I sort of get it too sometimes. Boy, was he right. I found a man that really knows his stuff, he continued. And then more hesitantly. He's a link to the dark web of a very good doctor. His methods are a bit unconventional, so he can't broadcast for the normies. But he's really skillful. I mean, at least his teachings has helped me a lot with my exams. He laughed at that. I thought about it for a while before answering. Yeah, sure, I said. Let's see what this mysterious doctor has to offer. By then I had read many books and articles already, and I'd give anything to see something fresh. You know, Jonathan smiled and gave me a note of the alleged link. Nice, bro. If you need any help with this dark web thing, give me a call. My phone's always on that note. It would be cool to chill out in this doctor's chat room and learn from him. I didn't have to call him. I politely said goodbye as he left and resumed with my lunch, but I was curious now. See, I am by no means a computer guy, but I can work my way through some stuff, so I won't bore you with the details of how I got to this state. Most of you here are familiar with this kind of story anyway. The path is simple. You get the appropriate software to enable you to go into the deep web, and then you can start searching. You have to be very specific for what you're looking for, otherwise you'll get lost in a mountain of cyber junk. And specific I was. I got to the link I wanted relatively fast. It was a site called Anatomy 102. It had a plain gray template and a classical ancient Greek symbol of medicine as a logo, a snake wrapping itself around a rod. Although it was a little different from the usual one, the snake looked like it was biting on something, and that something sort of resembled a human skull. It looked a little peculiar. There was a camera focused on an empty white room and also a chat room. The chat room had around 50 people, active, casually talking about various medicine specializations, speculating what they would learn about today, 
Around ten minutes later, two people appeared in the room, both wearing the typical operation room uniform, dragging a big table of surgery tools with them. One of them disappeared from the screen, and the other stood in front of the camera, still wearing his mask. Hello, my dear audience. It brings me great pleasure to see so many of you here today. This is a place of learning and understanding, so I would advise all of you to pay attention and observe all the details. And I like this introduction. A true professor. For those of you who happen to be new here, let me introduce myself. I'm going by the name Dr. Mason here, but you can just address me as Doctor in the chat. Every two weeks, we gather around here to discuss something about anatomy and how it works in practical ways. As he finished his words, the second guy got into frame again, this time pushing a surgery table before him. The table was full. I guess it had a dead body or a sleeping person on it. By the time the count in the chat room read 250 online people, the other guy was also wearing a mask and took the sheet that was covering the body on the bed to reveal something I was not prepared for. A living human, fully awake, muffled and tied on the bed with leather straps. He was middle-aged with brown hair and a very scared look in his eyes. The man was sweaty and in obvious distress, but couldn't do much, tied like a piece of meat as he was. As you may know, the doctor continued, the digestive system is one of the most impressive and important systems in the human body. It is the source of all the energy input and output of animals. Today, we'll give it a closer look. The chat box was filled with a lot of expressions of happiness as people seemed to be content with the idea of the lesson. I, for one, felt nervous. I could never expect what followed next. The doctor started operating on the man on the bed, without using any anesthesia. He got open an incision in his belly, while the man's screams were drowned behind the muffler. After that, he started taking parts of the victim's intestines out and showing them on the camera, talking in detail about everything and also applying pressure at certain points to demonstrate what he was talking about, generating huge amounts of pain for the helpless victim. During the whole process, he had shown no hint of emotion. The chat was filled with questions, most of which he replied to, the same way our professor talked to us back in uni. He paid extra attention to those who wanted him to experiment on, on the limitations of the victim. He noted that the people asking those questions had true motivation to learn and will progress in their career. After that statement, he followed through with the suggestions given to him. Blood had started to make a puddle on the floor. Every now and then the victim would faint by the sheer pain that he felt, but the doctor's helper would wake him up every time. The doctor insisted that this is important for the patient to have his senses in order for us to take notes of his reaction. I was shocked, but I couldn't look away. The same thing when you see a gruesome accident on the street. You know that if you check to see what happened, you'll feel the urge to throw up, but you still turn your head and look, your eyes thirsty for the, for the odd and the gore. The procedure was getting more and more extreme. The incision was even bigger now, and the doctor was explaining the reflexes of the stomach while holding the actual man's organs in his hands. He applied pressure to it, and a wave of gastric fluids went through a now crying man's esophagus, choking him as he was lying face up. It didn't last much longer after this. The victim was unconscious, and it seemed that even the helper couldn't bring him up anymore. After a few tries, the helper looked at the doctor and nodded. The doctor returned his face to the camera. All right, class, that's all I had to talk about today. Any questions? A few messages appeared in the chat box, and he selectively answered some of them. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today, class, he said. And then he continued. Okay, who would like to volunteer for the next lesson? The chat was suddenly silent. But come on, such a shy audience. You'll never become true scientists if you're afraid to take risks. Anyhow, most of you know the procedure. If no one volunteers, I will randomly choose someone from the chat, and by next lecture in two weeks' time, he will be the person in the bed leading all of you guys into the next enlightenment. To be honest, the patient's job is more important than mine. I'm just explaining things, so he should be very proud and cherish the fact that he's actually the real teacher. Still silence. All right, then. But I am not happy about that. Let me find someone myself. 
He appeared to be searching for something on his monitor. Username HealthyRaven96 will be with us next lesson. I'll see you all then. Healthy Raven 96 got instantly disconnected. The others started to log out too, while some stayed to discuss the lesson. I turned off my PC. What had I just watched? This is more like a cult than a classroom. It wasn't natural to see a human guinea pig for teaching, but still. Still, I learned so much. This person talked with so much passion for science and had a strange charisma that you might even call it charm. But no matter, I, I decided to never open the site again. I was not going to be participating in this illegal situation. I knew how wrong it was, but deep inside me, my everlasting thirst was still demanding more. I broke my promise two weeks later. It was the day of the supposed lecture that I couldn't help take it out of my mind. I, I logged in for Anatomy 102 once again. This time a young woman was on the bed. The process was similar. Dr. Mason introduced himself and started his lesson, this time focusing on the nervous system. I, I was hooked before I even knew it and watched the entire talk without even flinching this time. Until the moment that the unlucky girl was dead, I hadn't even moved from my chair. And this became a part of my life. I was following every lecture showing 100% attendance. I watched as men, women, and on some rare times, children were brought to their untimely death by the shake of science. I started participating actively, asking questions about amputations and tissue damage. Sometimes I was the one who suggested the craziest experiments. I wasn't addicted to the gore in particular, but it was a small price to pay for knowledge. I knew so much, for example, that, that the pain threshold we were taught that the human body can withstand, it, it's all crap. I saw with my very own eyes how much the human organisms can suffer before, before even giving up for good. That and many other things that are not to be told in this post. The months went by fast. I kept watching for the lectures. Some rare times, there was someone aspired so much from the doctor's words that he or she would volunteer for the lesson, making all of us sigh in relief, but those times were rare. It was mostly Russian roulette every week. I was scared, of course, but the risk was well worth the reward. At the same time, I studied even harder, completely locking myself out of the real world. I wanted to learn even more now. So much, so much was I inspired by this masked man that a day came which I never expected to come. The doctor had finished a lecture, slowly turning a man's brains into mashed potatoes. And as always, he looked for a volunteer. After the usual awkward silence, I heard something truly terrifying. Okay then, students, next to come here with us will be... Lotus Eclipse. My username. My stupid username made as a, as a pun of my favorite car. I had thought that this might happen, but never actually thought that it would. The chances were always pretty low. I was enjoying the classes way too much to stop. For the first time since that fateful day that I learned about this damn site, I called the only man that could understand me, Jonathan. He picked up the phone. We talked for a long time, and in the end, we managed to formulate a solution. We spent the rest of the time until the lecture in my house. We were together all the time in order to succeed what we planned. Three days before the lesson was to happen, we were attacked while we were in that house. I don't know how, how they found us, but truth be told, the doctor had never failed to locate his forced volunteer. He was with his helper, as I predicted. Jonathan had a flash earlier this week and had bought us gas masks as a precaution. I didn't know how he foresaw that, but we were prepared for the gas that our stalkers used that night. I guess that's how the doctor managed to get his victims in the operating room in one piece every time. People perhaps were prepared for an assault, but very few had thought of that. Now, I was lucky to have access to a gun, an heirloom of my early past father. I managed to shoot the knee of the doctor before he could attack. The helper was not much of this ice-cold man that I had thought of when I watched the live streams. He was very willing to help us with whatever we wanted in exchange for his life. After I got all the information I wanted, I shot him taking his annoying whining out of my ears. And here we are today. As I'm typing this, I hear the muffled voice of a man behind me. It was easy to get the codes of the streaming and the doctor's username and passwords from this crying helper pleading for his life so that I could continue the job and the idea that he had started. I felt that he had helped me a lot during this time, and it was 
It was time for me to help others. With Jonathan at my side, we would venture to experiments which no one had ever dared to conduct. We would take science and medicine many steps ahead through our will to try new things. But it just felt right that I would give Dr. Mason a great gift. He always believed that the man in the bed was doing the greatest sacrifice. And I wanted him to have this honor for his last ever appearance in the classroom. His screams and violent shaking on the bed, though, gave a different suggestion. I guess he wasn't such a believer and a pioneer as he always thought, but no matter. Time is now for someone new to take his place. Someone with vision and skills and cunning. Someone like me to continue his work. So friends, I invite you all to join us. We'll learn together and find answers to all the questions we still have for the human body so that in time we can have perfect knowledge of medicine and its practices. Come to the stream and be a part of the class as we'll examine all that there is to the human organism and feel free to ask any questions you like. My helper and I will be happy to answer them or show some real life examples to help you understand better. So, if you'll excuse me, the lesson's about to start and I have planned a very special lecture as a parting gift for Dr. Mason. I'll see you all in class. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and we are back after Halloween. So, I want to give a big thank you to my Patreons. Those specifically are the ones that are in the description, and Joey Gilbert, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Chumpinski, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Buddy Burrows, Stephen Van House, Tristan Pelton, G Weevil 3, Asia, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Nico Keo, Caleb Dougal, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, The Ginger Bros, Don Mewmeister, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Alex, Steampunk Sinner, The Rafael Rodriguez, Optimistic Avocado, and Dr. Strawberry. If you guys would like to join them, you can always head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. Even helping with $1 actually helps keep me alive. So a big thank you to all of you who are there from $1 all the way up to however much that you guys give. Thank you. I appreciate you guys subscribing and checking back with the channel every single day because, dear lord help me, we are on daily uploads, meaning new horror stories from me here at Mr. Creepypasta on YouTube or Mr. Creepypasta on Spotify. Sweet dreams, kids.